Let's see which direction the second law of thermodynamics predicts that heat will flow when we have the following setup. So we have a closed system here on the left and it has some temperature, TL, it has some volume, VL. And we have another closed system on the right, temperature, TR, and volume, VR. And there's a partition which separates these two and this partition is fixed. So they can exchange energy with each other, but they cannot move this partition so they can't do work on each other so the only way in which they can exchange energy is heat and we want to see which direction does the heat flow depending on the relative values of these two temperatures here and outside of this system these are completely isolated so the only way for them to exchange energy with anything is for them to exchange heat with one another so as we said uh, dv for the left and for the right is going to be zero so that implies that the work that can be done by either of them is also zero because we can't push or move this partition here in blue at all so that means that the change in internal energy on the left or on the right we'll say the change in internal energy on the left is going to be the heat which is uh, input into the left and we're going to call that quantity just dq then we have the same for the right the only change in internal energy for the right is going to be the heat which is done on the right and that's going to be the negative of whatever heat is transferred into or out of uh, tl there so that's going to be minus dq this quantity that we have there so the two of these will sum up to zero and that will give us a total energy change for this net system as zero which it has to be because it's an isolated system so the energy of an isolated system has to be constant okay so we've looked at this part about uh, this heat here now let's look at what the entropy change is going to be when heat flows between these two systems so we have ds for the left it's going to be uh, dql divided by the temperature on the left entropy being the differential in heat divided by temperature differential entropy is going to be that differential and we've defined this to be dq there so it's dq over tl now what about for the right ds ds for the right it's going to be the differential of heat for the right divided by the temperature of the right and that's going to be minus dq over tr okay so what's going to be the entropy of the total system then so ds which is the entropy for the total system there the total isolated system is just a sum of the entropy of each of the components DSL plus DSR so that is going to be we have DQ over TL minus DQ over TR so there's a DQ on each of these numerators here so we can factor those out and then get what our final result is here we have that ds equals dq so the change in entropy for our system is going to be the differential of heat times the quantity 1 over tl minus 1 over tr and we know from the second law of thermodynamics that the entropy change for any process for an isolated system such as this total net system here must be greater than or equal to zero for any process it'll be zero if it's a reversible process and greater than zero if it's a spontaneous or irreversible process okay so let's see what happens here when we have some different values of TL and TR so what about if TL is greater than TR well if TL is greater than TR then we have 1 divided by big is going to be small minus 1 divided by small is going to be big so we have small minus big so that's going to give us a number that's less than 0 
Okay, so if this whole number here is less than zero, then we have to multiply it times a negative number so that our entropy will be greater than zero. Because our entropy has to be greater than zero. So we have negative times negative gives us a positive. So that means that dq must be negative. So we've defined dq to be the heat which flows, well, I kind of got it messed around up there. Uh, well, heat that flow, yeah, heat that flows into the left there. So the heat that flows into the left is negative. So heat is flowing from the left to the right when the temperature is greater on the left than on the right. So if heat is flowing from the left to the right, that means that, well, let's do that. So that means that the temperature of the left is going to go down and the temperature of the right is going to go up. So is this consistent with our kind of common sense knowledge of these types of systems? We know that heat flows from high temperature places to low temperature places and tends to equilibrate those temperatures over time. So TL is higher and its temperature goes down as it gives heat to the right and raises its temperature. And that will raise the total entropy of the system and that will occur until their temperatures are equal. So the second law of thermodynamics actually predicts and enforces the fact that heat must flow from hot to cold. So according to the second law of thermodynamics we have shown that heat flows from hot to cold places. And that's very good because we know that it does that. So now you know why heat flows from hot to cold places it's because that's what is required in order for the entropy of the total system to be going up and the second law of thermodynamics requires that the entropy for any isolated system go up or go up or stay the same over time okay and then let's look at another scenario if tr is tl is less than tr then we have one over smaller is bigger minus one over bigger is smaller so we have big minus small that gives us a positive number so a positive number times something gives us a positive number for the change in entropy so positive times a positive is going to give us a positive so that means that dq is going to be greater than zero and that means that heat is going to flow from the right to the left so the temperature of the left is going to go up and the temperature of the right is going to go down. So again, the higher temperature object will decrease in temperature and the lower temperature object will increase in temperature as heat flows from hot to cold until they equilibrate. All right. And then the last case we can have is if TL equals TR what will happen then? We'll have 1 over a number minus 1 over the same number, so that gives us a 0 here. So initially, dq can, can go either direction, but it can only go either direction infinitesimally. It's only going to be, it's only going to result in a 0 energy change, a 0 entropy change until one of these temperatures gets higher than the other, and then it'll flow back and forth. So the really the net heat that you're going to get over time is going to be zero and you have TL and TR will stay the same because if either one of them went up or down uh, at the expense of the other as heat transferred back transferred back and forth uh, then then the total entropy of that system would go down beyond this kind of very small stationary point here Right at right at a zero heat applied. If you apply a, if you apply a finite amount of heat, then the temperatures will change and the entropy will go down. So uh, you can only have an infinitesimal amount of heat, but uh, in practice, you'll see that heat will come out to be zero. So this is good. It's a good sanity check that the second law of thermodynamics is telling us good things because it predicts something which is consistent with our intuitive experience that heat flows from hot regions to cold regions.